three, two, one, and we're back. And this is going to be day two of the interview I did a couple of days ago with Brandon. Um, based on day one, I know you're going to love day two. So without any further delay, here we go. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. And, and so that's the thing. So we can coach them, we can train them, but we weren't getting them to be financially responsible. We weren't making it. So there was a missing, you know, we feel like we'd prepare them and prepare them. And then we kind of push them out in the wild after they've, you know, got their skills on. And then they'd fall into some trap that would, you know, it would move them further away from their true goal, which was to be free. Because yeah. really, every that's what everyone's goal is. That, I mean, why did yeah. you get into real estate originally? Yeah, 100%. We're, we're, we're totally in alignment there. And and I'll, I'll um, pull back the curtain a little bit on, on that last point, just so I don't forget this. You know, when I have thought about aligning with one of these virtual brokerages, whether that be EXP or real or whatever, what you just said is the part that I resonate with a lot because of what we said 10 minutes ago, which is this. Let me remind this for the audience. When you and I pour into a real estate agent and we coach them to a level of production where they're really, really exceeding their expectations. They're really serving their family at a high level. And then we put them back into the wild. The wild that I'm that 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 when you said that is putting them back in the hands of a broker who has never sold real estate, who has never succeeded. And so the benefit you get at EXP that I resonate with is like you get to they, they're still in Tim's hands. They're they're in partnership with you and Julie. So you're not putting them back into maybe the wrong person's hands, which I could see makes a lot of sense. So EX, the, again, I was the most skeptical. I, I was the most skeptical person to ever talk to. I, they solicited us for six years prior to us actually aligning. Um, and I was incredibly skeptical for all the reasons and a whole bunch of other reasons. Mostly it was out of ignorance and ego. That's really the bottom line. Like I didn't fully understand how much of an improvement to agents' lives um, EXP was going to offer. And I, I really didn't even after we uh, aligned. And this was four years ago this month, actually. So mm. so four years ago this month when we aligned, it was I it was six months, um, you know, maybe June of that 2019 before I really had my mind wrapped around. And I'll tell you what it was, is because I started seeing agents that we'd coached for a long period of time who were accumulating stock, who had some of them had revenue share. So they were starting to make money different ways. And I thought, damn, now I get it. And and also I came across this video of Glenn Sanford being interviewed and he was a successful real estate agent. He ran teams and with KW and was very, and then 2007 hit and, it, you know, sucked the wind out of his sales like it did a lot of other people. Uh, and that's when he realized that basically I need to create a brokerage that's truly agent centric, not just what brokers say. Right. Right. And, and so it creates multiple streams of income from just the, what you're already doing. So you go to EXP, chances are you're going to pay a hell of a lot less in commission split because it's only a $16,000 cap. And if you have a team of up to 10 people, it's an $8,000 cap and it's a $4,000 cap. But for top producers, like, I mean, the ICON program, they effectively get their cap back in the form of VXPI stock. So you will, if you're an, if you're an agent who's in production at, at, at a decent level, you're not going to really effectively pay EXP anything. And when I put all these thoughts together, especially for our coaching clients initially, my mind was blown yeah. because it's like, holy crap, because now I can teach them to be successful selling real estate and they're going to be making, uh, I remember Colette McDonald showed me her EXP stock awards from having capped for three years in a row. And it was a significant amount of money that she got for free at mm. for free. So she would, it, so basically to ICON, you hit, uh, you, you cap, that's $16,000. Then after that, you have to sell an additional, uh, you basically have to have a total GCI of 500 grand, including what you paid into cap or sell an additional 25 units. So someone who's selling lesser expensive homes or someone selling more expensive homes, they can accomplish it. Well, she'd done that a number of years in a row and a lot of other people in our group have as well. And then when I, when they share with me, what an impact that's made on their lives, having that financial security for the first time. It is emotional. For sure. I mean, honestly, I want to change the topics because I'll get emotional just thinking about it. Yeah. But but then revenue share. I had people that we've coached that got sick, that had just all kinds of life happens, right? And the revenue share was able, it was is it sustained them. They were able to basically pay all their bills and they didn't run into have financial destitute. And 
I mean, all that together is just incredible. And and the the rap that EXP gets is just a recruiting company. It's such such bullshit. Yeah, of the I get 86, it. It, well, there's, I, I know, I, I told you, I warned you, don't get me on my hey, soapbox. I'm very enthusiastic right. about it, honestly. I know you are. It's You're you're, you're impacting people's lives. I, I'll i never take that away from you. I'll never, you know, uh, try to shut that conversation down. I know how passionate you are. I know the impact you're making. People I coach are in your world. You know what I mean? So I get it. I know the impact that you make. And so, no, I'll never take that away from you. Yeah. Well, anyway, it, it's the... It's the greatest, it's the seventh wonder of the world, but it's only available to you if you have a real estate license. <laughs> that's yeah, really that's it. crazy. And all, there's, all these, there's all these, you know, replica companies, fakey do companies coming out, but none of them have the same, you know, feature. When you have nearly 100,000 agents, you're going to be able to do things. And, and Glenn built this thing with no debt, you know, but you're going to be able to do things that other companies aren't going to do. Healthcare. And I mean, I could tell you stories about EXP's healthcare that, that just you, how many agents have healthcare? <laughs> right. Like none. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And how many agents have fallen into bankruptcy from uh, health problems or the kids having health problems? How many agents have fallen in? How many agents do you know that successfully retire? Yeah. No, none. Zero. I, yeah. I know agents that are retiring in EXP now in their 40s. Yeah. You know? it it's is incredible. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And so, and the thing that you said, you know, a couple times on this podcast is the word focus. And because if I were to boil it down, I think I would say the same thing you did. Like the opposite of distraction is is focus. And that's the hardest part for people getting in this industry with all the voices coming at them. No, no bullshit. I was having a conversation with an agent I was coaching yesterday. And the advice he got from his broker was do not, absolutely do not prospect. You need to just, <laughs> that's what he said. That was the advice he said to him. I'm like, you're kidding. He's like, no. Don't prospect. Only serve your, your people that you know. That's it. Well, that, so, that, but that, that's that broker's whole life experience. He, he came across a referral only type deal. Three houses a year. Team. I know. I yeah. get it. And so, so on the path of focus, is there some fundamentals, Tim, that you and Julie have found through coaching so many agents that you think is a good path that if they follow it, they can succeed? In other words, you know, all the voices things, right? So they're saying, make, you know, half naked TikTok dance videos and you'll get leads that way. Some people are saying, do this and you'll get leads. Do that, do this. When it comes to the basic fundamentals that an agent should focus on that you and Julie find successful every time somebody does it, what would be some of those things that, that you would want to share? First of all, remove from your mind that leads are hard to get because they're everywhere. That's leads right. Are, leads, are, leads are fungible. Leads and people buying buyer leads. Um, I, honestly, I have no flipping clue why anyone would buy a buyer lead. You if and you I take, are on the same page. It's so insane. Yeah, I know. But look how I, much money freaking Zillow and Realtors. It's unbelievable. It, I mean, dude, why don't we do that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we sure? should we should start that right after this podcast. Forget it. <laughs> podcast over. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, we got to go. Yeah. We got to go. We gotta, yeah, but seriously, because buyer leads. Yeah, something our first broker told us, Rory Averill, he goes, he goes, um, you know, we were trying to figure it all out. This is our first year. He goes, Tim, he talks really fast. I think I talk fast. This guy talked fast. He goes, Tim, take a listing and you'll have to beat the buyers, the buyers off the stick. Exactly. <laughs> and he's so right. And, and like, oh, I don't have a listing. How am I going to get buyer leads? Hold somebody's house open. Okay, exactly. Free, free. Yeah. It's I don't so know why insane. this is so hard for people to understand. Okay because they're following false profits. They're following yeah. profits that are after their own personal profits. So, you know, Great profit point. to profit yeah. to age, yeah. right? That's what it is. It's people basically trying to sell agents crap. And I'll circle back to your question. Uh, when Julie and I, cause you're right, to something you said a second ago, uh, it is. it would be very hard to discern the good, the bad from the ugly when it came to who to listen to. And so, you know, if, it, it, because there's so many people that come and go. The, the, the seller's market that we're leaving has created uh, trillions of dollars, I'm sure. Maybe not trillions, probably not trillions, but billions of dollars in these businesses that are essentially effectively trying to sell really mostly the same buyer leads to agents. It's extraordinary. Now, as and all of them were, you know, essentially got started on using venture money. Those companies are all going to go out of business. You mentioned uh, TikTok, for example. Do you think TikTok's going to be legal in the United States in 12 months? I no, don't. No, so absolutely not. I don't. Nor should it. 
frankly. It's on its way out right now. It well, not as a fad, but as basically um, legally a psyops I mean, experiment. Yeah, one hundred percent. You and I are on the same page. Yeah. All right. So, if and, you and let me make one example, thing clear, Tim. Hold on, before you unpack this, not. I want to. I was just thinking about this. Not all brokers are bad. That's not what I'm saying. Just to be clear for the audience, there are some phenomenal leaders. I'm just saying it's the 80 20 principle. But anyway, I digress. Go ahead. Keep keep rocking. Well, um, so the, there's something, I, Julie and I didn't think of this, but I love it. Don't build your mansion on land you don't own. And if you're mm. building your real estate business or deciding how to build your real estate business, if it's based on bot buyer leads, you don't own the, the land. So you might build. Um, a big buyer agent based business, you know, maybe you're going to, you know, I, I see this happening all the time. Agents get into the business and I'm going to build a team. I'm going to add a whole bunch of buyer agents. I'm going to become a, you know, whatever with whatever company and start getting all these buyer leads and I'm going to make a margin on them. And that's my business model until the source of your buyer leads decides to raise the price, decides to, um, you know, stop selling the leads to you. So you built your, you built your mansion on land you didn't own. Um, and that's what most agents are doing without knowing it. So to Absolutely. answer your question, you have to, so there's pre, there's, uh, you know, there's passive lead generation and there's proactive lead generation. And Julie and I, the spokes on the wheel analogy is something we came up with a long time ago. And the essence of it is, is it's a bicycle wheel. I think you use something similar with pillars. Yeah. Yeah. So the essence of it is, is there's a, it's a, it's an old fashioned bicycle wheel and there's, you know, imagine a circle and there's a little hub. I'm drawing and it right you, now. Right. There you go. That's why I have people do. Yeah. Okay. And then each spoke represents a source of business. So if you, like you mentioned a second ago, very good. You mentioned yeah. a second ago, um, the center of influence and past client, um, lead generation database. Yeah. Most, right. The reason most agents are attracted to that is because it requires the least amount of skill and there's the least amount of rejection, which is similar to the least amount of skill. That, by the way, is the first spoke that you should build on your wheel, but it's not the only spoke. 100%. Why centers of influence and past clients? Because most but most agents will be able to pick up a handful of deals every year from that easily by accident. So it, it, the premise of the wheel is that you want to have at least five to seven really strong spokes. Because if you have one spoke and your wheel is and it's on the front of your bike and you're rolling down the road and your wheel hits a little pebble in the road. That wheel has no integrity, no structural integrity. That wheel is going to collapse on itself and you're going to obviously hurt yourself. We don't want you to hurt yourself. So no, what you want don't. to do is you want to have Yeah, you, but the first spokes you put on your wheel have to be the strongest spokes. And after that, you can put on weaker spokes. So the first spokes on your wheel have to be, if you're serious about real estate, if you're serious about being in this business, if you're serious about making a profit in this business, the first spokes have to be proactive lead generation spokes. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you can start adding the passive lead generation spokes, which are frankly the things that everyone everyone does it backwards. Right. And you know, they're doing the they're doing the passive, the social media, the marketing, the branding, and all that stuff. All that stuff has a place in your business. Frankly, all that stuff is a hell of a lot more fun than right. the proactive lead generation for sure. But you've got to do it after you've done the proactive. And I'll give you an example. Chuck Williamson in Wilson, North Carolina. You've never heard of him before. Chuck makes, he's in our EXP group. He's somebody I coached. So he, he sells enough homes that in this little town, he makes well into the seven figures every year. He does 99% of it off of um, proactive lead generation. He does, he might do some now. I really don't know. I haven't talked to him in probably six months, but he does no social media. I had to show him how to log into Facebook, right? And, you know, he's not old. He's younger than yeah, me. Right. Yeah. So, but that, so the point is, is once you get really good at the proactive lead generation, you will never have to buy leads. And when someone comes up and tells you, you know, you have to do a half naked TikTok, you're going to say, are you kidding me? That's insane. Because you know, every single day you can wake up and you can proactively lead generate. If you are building your business with weak spokes, you're always going to be looking for the next shiny object because you know, damn well, your wheel has no integrity because it's already wobbly. So that's, you and I that's, are so completely aligned. Like I had to hold my smiles back because you and I are so philosophically aligned with everything you just said. That will be its own probably Instagram reel. That'll be its own TikTok video. What you just said. Because here's the thing. I mean, isn't that funny? I take my but, shirt off. You want me to take my shirt no, off? No, you could you could be fully clothed, actually. <laughs> so the thing is, you you nailed it, right? I mean, there's story after story after story. I mean, I coached a brand new agent in 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 um in Georgia, in Atlanta, and we had her 
get to 56 transactions in her first year, no website, no social media, no nothing. And then we let that business that has 90% margins fund what I call the inbound business. You call it the, the uh, proactive and passive. passive income. And we have her building content to generate leads, not paid traffic, free traffic through content, but we, we fund that through our direct outbound. And so we see it the exact same way. And it's like, everyone's doing it backwards. Everyone's building the brand and trying to get the inbound to work when they have no money coming in and they end up getting out of the business. So if you think about it, it's a Charlie Munger quote, don't try to be famous, try to make the work that you do famous or make the results you're getting for other people famous. And there's a lot of this influencer marketing that is probably a macro trend that's kind of waning, truthfully. Right. It started with Gary Vanderchuk, and there's some other people in our space really tried to, I mean, I got an email from the other day. Someone said, do you want to be a YouTube star? This was a real estate trainer. Sure. Trying to, yeah. But to answer our question that you and I have been bouncing around, why is the failure rate increasing? It's what you just said. That's why. Because yeah. agents are getting in and they're not being told to do the hard stuff first. There's a, a saying that Julie and I came up with a long time ago. If you want ever increasing levels of success in your business and personal life, do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Mm. That's really the bottom line. So if you find yourself being like, okay, Brandon and I are going to give you five ways to lead generate. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll tell you something funny. So we're in front of a group. Oh, in Iowa, by the way. And we're, at, we're uh, it was, I don't know, 75 people. And I, um, I said, okay, I'm going to run a contest. And the contest is if you take five listings in the next 30 days, I'll write you a check for a million dollars taxes paid. Here's a million dollars. And I said, so in the, that's what you have to do. Five listings in 30 days, which you could do with any proactive lead generator could do in a week. I mean, let's yep. be honest. And this is in Iowa, right? So, okay. And, and I said, what, this is the question. I said, what will you stop doing? Not mm. what will you do? Will you stop doing? And they all started to laugh because they all knew the flipping answer. And I had right. to And they all start, I say, so what would you stop doing? And they'll say, well, I probably wouldn't be doing this social media thing or that social media. Well, why? Well, it's because I know those things don't create business for me right away. And I know if I wanted to take five listings and win the contest, I would need to do these things. So what are the things that you'd want to do? Then the second question, right? And, and then they, they all kind of looked at each other because they didn't want to admit it. And I said, well, on the way to drive here, and this actually was the last time we were there, we drove past a for sale by owner. I said, I saw it. <laughs> Did all of you who had to have driven by that? Stuff? How many of you have called it so far? So there's a seller with a name, with, with their phone number. I want to sell. I want to sell. I want to exactly. sell. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't see it. I have to make a TikTok. I know. Forget it. <laughs> you know, I got my blinders on. And it's like, there's a seller who's telling you, now, I'll tell you the greatest opportunity in real estate right now, and I know you'll agree with this, is expired listings. Oh, no absolutely. Hands down. Oh. Yeah. And, and you know, here's what they say. You're hearing this too. Oh, everyone's calling them. Bullshit. Yeah. They're not because they don't know how to. You're competing against a generation of agents who've been in this industry during a time where you were told to build your business through branding, marketing, and passively generation. That's right. And if you think that you're competing with a bunch of agents to go after those expired, your competitors are mailing them things at yeah. best. They're yeah. sure as heck not actually having meaningful conversations that are going to result in them taking that listing. That's the biggest opportunity right now. Yeah. Well said. I mean, I don't even, I mean, that you just, you just nailed it. And so it's just amazing that, you know, these, these agents are, just struggle with it so bad. It's just the path of least resistance. You know, that, that's what it comes down to. It's just the path of, least resistance and you nailed it i've i've gone as far as i love your frame when you were on stage in iowa what would you stop doing if you had to get the listing i have challenged and i will put this challenge out here this would be a great place to end i will put this challenge out to any marketer that is listening or watching to this on youtube and i'll put up an agent that tries your little gimmick and i'll put another agent that uses proactive lead generation and in 30 days we'll see how many listings that person gets. And I, I've yet to have a marketer take me up on that because I love the way you do it. What would you, if you had to get a listing and your family needed to pay their bills, what would you do? And they always say the proactive lead gen stuff. They know they, the truth. They know the right. truth. It's just, it's hard. I didn't ask you to like it. 
I didn't so ask you, you that. So yeah, you and I are, I don't know what our industry is, but let's just call, call it the real estate agent coaching and training space, right? Sure. So why is it that so many age, or so many people that are in the same space as us, you know, influencers, whatever word you want to use, why is it that they're so, uh, why is it that they're selling the passive stuff? I'll tell you, because there's no better marketing message than easy. That's why. Correct. That's the answer. Yeah. So, so That's you got you got Tim and Brandon on the mountaintop saying this is what gets results. Is it easy? No. Is it hard? Yes. And then you got Bob, Sue, and, and every Tom, Dick, and Harry over here saying, "Don't listen to Tim and Julie, guys. That's old school. Come over here and do you know, put the bikini on." You know, just shake your rear end and you'll start getting leads. And it's like, wow, that's a lot more enjoyable. Let me go over there. That's why. I, I agree. And agents are, it's its because agents do not want to do what they don't want to do when they Absolutely don't want not. to do it at the high school. But nobody really does. I don't. I right. have to force myself every day to work out. Same. Doing- Same. <laughs> every day. Never one day in my life have I wanted to work out. Never one day. Well, and, and here's the other truth. You know, the even... It doesn't really matter what it is. Everything is hard. You know, shooting content. People see us doing content. It's like, well, you think I want to shoot this con- you as much content as I do every single day? I don't want to do that. I'd rather be doing something else. But I do it every single day. And everyone's like, I want to grow a YouTube channel. No, you don't. Because the second that camera goes on, you're like, oh, dude, that's too uncomfortable. As soon as I ask you to call it for sale by owner, it's like, oh, no, you don't. That's too uncomfortable. Anything that's going to work is going to cause you to have some pain. And my thing is, the thing that causes the pain is probably the right path. The thing that is easy is probably the wrong path. That's my framework for making decisions. So anyways, you and I could probably go for a couple days on this stuff. If people want to learn more about what you and Julie are doing, where can they go? Where's the best spot for them to learn about you know partnering with you guys or learning from you guys? Where should well, they go? Really, the best place to get to know us is going to be on our podcast, and it's number one. It's it's a great I podcast. Think, yeah, thank you. I think we've had we typically we've had over twenty million downloads. We've had you know thousands of shows. It's incredible. Yeah. But yeah, so you can go just Google Tim and Julie Harris podcast, or just go to iTunes and just look up Tim and Julie Harris. It's called Real Estate Coaching and Training uh, Radio. But I mean, you can find it everywhere. That's the I'll, best. Place I'll, I'll link to it. Tim, okay. I'll put a link to your guys' podcast in the show notes but beneath this, everyone. You guys can just go check it out. It's a great podcast. I've been listening to it my whole career. 16 years, you know? So yeah, keep going. We, we do need to say this, though. Otherwise, someone's going to basically flame you in comments, okay? So I I know you believe that social media has a place. Of course, it Absolutely. does. But I, so we need to make this clear. We're not saying it doesn't. It does. But it has to come after you've learned how to do the proactive lead generation. Can you be successful? <laughs> Doing the passive lead generation, yes, but your profit margins will be terrible. Right. And furthermore, you will always be spending more money to try to you know, maintain status quo. Is there a place, it's, he gave a great example, is there a place for passive lead generation social media? Yes. Should you have profiles and all the social stuff? Yes. Um, and we could talk about AI and we could talk about a lot of the things that are going to be creating a lot of social media content. But really, if you want to be successful long-term in real estate, not just successful because you look successful, successful truly because you've helped thousands of people and made millions of dollars. You've actually had enough profit that you've built, you know, a fortune, for, essentially enough passive income for yourself that you're rich and rich is where your money works for you and you no longer have to work for your money. Do it in the right order. And if it feels hard, if your initial impression to us asking you to go talk to that for sale by owner is hell no, that's to his point, exactly what you should be doing. And you know it. That's Stop right. resisting. I, yeah. I, I, so yeah, uh, I posted this on, on Twitter yesterday, literally to my, to your point. And I want to make this super clear for the audience. Cause Tim, that's a really good, I'm glad you did that. I took the six ways to generate business and I posted this on Twitter and I ranked them. I said, number one is your top 100, your SOI past client database. Number two, unpaid direct outbound. This is proactive lead generation. Number three, Referral partners, divorce attorneys, CPAs, insurance agents. Number four on the list, okay? So middle of the road was unpaid direct inbound. So this is content. This is not even buying leads. This is going out there and 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 creating valuable content to have your ideal client find you. And five and six were paid. 
And so it's like, I make the argument, my whole point, Tim, is before you even get into paid traffic, you can do one through four, which is all free, and generate a seven-figure real estate sales business and never have to pay for anything. And, oh, by the way, do I believe in content marketing? A thousand percent. It just has to be funded through direct outbound or, 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 or you'll starve. I've been posting videos on YouTube for a long time. It wasn't until two years ago that I've gotten any traction. And so all we're saying is as you're doing these other channels, that you have a direct outbound approach that's generating cash flow right now, this week, this month, as you build the long-term stuff out. That's it. 100%. I agree. Yeah, that's great. I love it. Appreciate you, brother. Of course. You too. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.